Hello and welcome to the 47th tutorial in the SFML 2.1 series. In this part we're going to be looking at how to achieve frame rate independent gameplay. We'll be using the source code from the third tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Okay, we have learned loads of SFML, but unfortunately frame rate can vary depending on machine and also depending on what is happening in the game. So as developers we must create our game uh, to run as similar as possible regardless of the frame rate. It's a given that during low frame rates the game won't be enjoyable but we don't want a machine which can run the game with a, at a really high frame rate to be speeding through the game at a ridiculous and unplayable speed. We want, we want like, the, the gameplay, the movement um, or the timing to be the same. Obviously it might be a little jerky and a little laggy but if it takes five seconds on a machine that achieves 60 frame rates for, for, for 60 frames per second to maybe have a drop a ball on a machine that can only do 25 frames per second we want it to take five seconds as well but obviously the animation won't look as smooth so let's go ahead and open up our project we're going to demonstrate this with a sprite and what we're going to do is ff sprite sprite do sf texture now it's going to do if this is all stuff that we've covered before it's not texture load from file and here is going to paddle large png std I was going to put handle error you can handle it however you want to and do sprite.set texture texture now we're going to do window.draw sprite and now what we're going to do is move our sprite every frame so to do that we're just going to go down here and do sprite.move why did I draw the sprite up there? that was stupid, I'm meant to draw it down here okay it's bright dot move and in here we're just gonna say uh, sf vector to f and I'm gonna put 0 for the x axis and 0 0.1 for the y axis and now let's just run our application we have our paddle that is moving down but now let's just see uh, let's just rerun it a second we have our paddles moving down and it's taking about, I don't know, about 5 seconds to move down. And what we're going to do now is just set the frame rate. So we're going to do window.set frame rate. Let me, I'm going to put 15. Run our application. It's still moving, but it is clearly slower. It, ignore the jerkiness and the lagginess, but by this time the actual sprite was already off the screen if I double this now to 30 you can, you can guess it will be back twice as fast now it's moving down a little faster now if I increase this to 60 that's moving down a little, even a little faster if I change this to 120 moving down a little faster again and if I put 240 it's moving down a little bit faster so this isn't what we want we don't want the frame rate to vary and then the game speed to vary we're gonna actually use our frame rate to create frame rate independent game plan to do that all you do is multiply this number I actually will need to create SF clock first. So SF clock, we covered this in the previous tutorial. And now here I'm just gonna do SF time time equals clock dot get elapsed time. And I'm gonna do multiply by time. And I'm gonna do add millisecond. You can use the other one if you 
one, two, and I'm going to change this to 0 0.5 simply because I know 0 0.1 is a little too slow. And it's the frame rate is set to 240 frames per second. Let's just rerun this application. That was quite fast, it went off. Actually, 0 0.1 might be best. Let's Still pretty fast actually. Ah, uh, uh, I know why. Change this back. I forgot to reset the clock. Uh, so I'm just going to reset the clock. So I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, I'll put it the uh, clock dot restart dot as milliseconds. My bad. Now if I run this. As you can see, moved down, and we were able to see. It. But if we change this to 120 frames per second, still moving at a similar speed. Didn't really see any lag enough. Not 600, it's 60 now. It's a lower laggier than before, but the speed is still the same. Probably at 30. Low lag yet, but it's still moving at the same speed. And now finally, let's look for 15, which is very, very slow. Poor gameplay experience, but it is still moved from its original position to off the screen in the same amount of time. And that's exactly what we want. This is how you achieve frame rate independent gameplay. Anytime you're moving anything, rotating or updating anything, factor in frame rate. And the one thing also to do is keep it consistent. If you do time in milliseconds, keep it, keep using time in milliseconds. If you do time in seconds, keep using time as seconds. No task to do. Uh, do this, but move the sprite when the user presses a key, perhaps the down key. So you can mix a previous tutorial for key events or live keyboard input and this tutorial to move a item or do something to an item and do frame rate independent gameplay. Here's another task you can do where you could do if you've done that is use another key maybe R to rotate your sprite with frame rate independent gameplay and just check out check what it looks like if you don't have frame rate independence built in. That's it for this tutorial. In the next part of this series, we're going to be looking at how to create a class which handles update and render. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the requirements for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.